Well, as you heard on the program, and you've heard on the program in the last couple of days, the people at Newport on the northern beaches are not happy with Woolworths, or some of them. A lot of people are not happy with Woolworths, I can tell you. There was a major protest there against plans to build a Woolworths supermarket in the area. Plans to build a giant Woolworths on what the locals say was Newport's public village land. The Newport Port versus Woolies community group had more than 5,000 people sign a petition against the proposed development. I didn't even know there were 5,000 people living in Newport, I might add. But 2,500 people wrote to the council to express their opposition to Woolworths. There's never been such an objection to a development in the history of Pittwater Council. The council voted five to two the night before last to support the rezoning that may allow, not necessarily will, may allow the supermarket to be to be built. But here's the rub. A deal was done between the council and Woolworths, a conditional deal, a conditional contract. No community consultation about that deal, no prior planning, but the council won't disclose the details of the contract with Woolworths. The ratepayers can't be trusted. Now, of course, Woolworths would say and have said there's another side to the story. There are often good men in bad causes, and I thought we'd hear that other side of the story. One of them is a young man, Simon Berger, who does have ability, this young man, and he is the Community Relations Manager for Woolworths. And he's on the line. Simon, good morning. Good morning, Alan. Not too many community relations here, it would appear. But in defence of all of this, what you're saying is this doesn't give a green light to the proposal. No, it doesn't. Uh we're four years into this, Alan, and we haven't got to the point where we can lodge a development application. And that should tell you that far from getting a free ride, um, we are being put through the ringer and that this is not a simple issue and certainly not as simple as the protest that you had on your program yesterday would, would make it out to be. Yes, of course, but you people always hide behind the notion that there's a silent majority. Well, why is the majority, if it's so much in favour, silent? Well, people don't protest in favour of things, Alan, but there's one exception to that, and that was 61 shopkeepers from Newport, uh, these are the small businesses right around us, took the initiative to sign and submit a petition saying that they supported our Woolworths development. The reason they did that, Alan, is because they know that Newport needs a shot in the arm. They thought our development would bring back local shoppers, that it would fix a big car parking problem that they have, and that's one of the things that complicates this issue, and that it would reinvigorate Newport, and that that people don't shop there. Locals don't shop there, and they know that you need some investment in there to reinvigorate what's a a run-down shopping strip in what is an otherwise beautiful suburb. Well, let me just say, Woolworths are very lucky to have someone like you, I can tell you, because uh, this young man wrote to me. He is, as I said, the community relations manager, but I was most impressed by the clarity of the case that he put And unlike most of these corporations, he presented all the pros and all the cons. So just let's come on some of those points, because I thought you made them very clearly and they deserve to be shared. Now, have you got a petition from these 61 small businesses? Yes, that was uh, submitted as part of the process. That's something that I'd be able to see. Absolutely. You can download it from the Pittwater Council website. Okay. And you're saying, uh, what you said to me in your letter, that the Newport Shopping Strip, and I can understand this, is badly run down. And you're saying that a local laundry owner, a local restaurateur, a young surf shop owner are crying out for Newport to get a shot in the arm. Uh, too right they are. Right Absolutely, out. Alan. And you say these people are, t- quote, tired of a small vocal group claiming to speak for everyone. Now, what, what, I, what you're saying here is, I guess, is that these people want to have a reinvigoration of the precinct. That's absolutely right, Alan. So why what, what the 5,000 petitioners are against, of course, and I would be too, is that what is wrong with the deal that was done between Woolworths and the council? What is wrong with the details of that contract being known? They are known, Alan. Uh, the, there's a mountain of documents on the Pittwater Council website. Uh, the council even issued a press release uh, at the time this contract was, was signed. It was part of a, an open tender process. Um, there's been a full probity audit by Deloitte that have given it a complete clean... But if I asked you today for the details of the contract between the council and Woolworths, would I be able to get a copy of that? Uh, there's a mountain of documents on the council website. We're... I don't want the website. I'm asking, would you be able to give me a hard copy of the contract between the council and Woolworths? Well, that's up to council to do that, but we'd have no... No, you're you're Woolworths. You can say to council, well, just to prove that we're on the right tram here, uh, Woolworths approve of this being given. Why can't you? 
No problem with us, Alan. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing that, Simon. Okay, let me just go back. You're saying that council decided, what council decided gives Woolworths a green light to just put forward a DA? That's right. There's still a very rigorous development application process, which is uh, fair enough, um, that we'll be put through. But we do own one of the blocks of land in question and we have an agreement to purchase the others. And the reason why this is complex is the two go together, that if you developed one without the others, you'd leave council with two uh, orphaned or isolated bits of car park that would lead to a substandard outcome. So even if you wanted any of the alternatives that the protesters say they want, and there's nowhere near... It would involve the car park. By the way. It would involve uh, the car park. But, but one of the points you made, which I thought was quite powerful in relation to a community, you say there are 7,000 residents at Newport and in the catchment area who shop at Mona Vale. And right. you say because they go to Mona Vale to do their food shopping, they then do all their major shopping somewhere else and don't shop locally. That's right, Alan. We can tell from our customer data where customers in our stores come from. And every week, 7,000 people in Newport, which is on Sydney's northern beaches and further north, get in their cars. They drive outside of their local suburb to do their major grocery shopping and they take all their business with them and they get their hair cut there and they do their banking there or they go to the chemist there. And, and by having a full-range supermarket in the village, that would provide an anchor that's what the small businesses will definitely say, uh, and that will encourage people to come and shop again in Newport, uh, give it a shot in the arm, fix the parking problem. And it's now part of a, a great design. We, we had a first go at this, Alan, and we uh, didn't necessarily put our best foot forward, and we, we were in a hole with the community, but we did listen to uh, the feedback. We uh, took on board most of the reasonable suggestions um, at great effort and great expense, <laughs> we put forward a, a new design and we think that public opinion has turned around quite a lot. There are certainly some protesters still, and that's their right, uh, but there's also... Um, Have you spoken with those people? Oh, many times, right. many times. OK. Well, it's good to talk to you. I think you're on, a, you're on a tram here. I think what you've done for Woolworths, which is so beneficial, is to openly present the case for and against and to make yourself available to share all of this because that's the only way to go forward. Otherwise, there's a whole lot of suspicion and mistrust. I noted that um, you're quoting of a 2008 independent report commissioned by the Shaw Region of Councils that without sensible provision for retail space in pit water, the report warns of, quote, expenditure escaping the region, quote, missed opportunities for local employment, quote, a reduced level of convenience and range of goods for the region's consumers, quote, increasing strain on roads within and out of the region. So there's a lot of issues to be raised here before it comes to finality, and I'm sure we'll talk again, Simon, but thank you for writing and thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for the opportunity, Alan. There he is, Simon Berger, done a very good job, hasn't he? He is the Community Relations Manager for Woolworths.